recording, Paula. <clears throat> Uh, good evening. My name is John Reynolds, Chairman of the Sewer Commission. It is six o'clock on March 12th. This is our regularly scheduled uh, meeting via remote participation. If I ever, Bill, if you want to hold up your flag, we can uh, do the pledge. I'll start out. I pledge allegiance Regents. to Can the flag, the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to, and to the Republic. To the Republic. For which, which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Great, thank you. <clears throat> okay. In accordance with the requirements of the over meet, open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting of the Sewer Commission is being recorded and will be able to be found on the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel after the meeting. The following information is also provided for members of the public that would like to participate in the meeting remotely. To participate remotely from a computer, please use the link to join the public meeting webinar found on the posted agenda, or from a phone, dial the toll-free number 888-475-4499 and enter the webinar ID 8 Seven one one seven six eight one three zero oh five. If you have not registered with Zoom, you will be asked for your name and email address. No participant ID is needed. Just press pound when asked. Okay, uh, we'll do a roll call vote of the commissioners. Uh, Brett Ramsden. Aye. Here. Dave McDonald. Here. Mike Nault. Present. Uh, I for myself and Mike Mackin will not be joining us tonight. Uh, sewer department members, uh, Bill Bernard. I'm here. Paula Bertram. Here. And Jane Rainley. Here. Okay. Any public comment from the public? Seeing none, any public comment from the commissioners? or staff members. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have one. Um, I know the town caucuses are coming up in another couple of weeks. I just want to announce that I will not be staying on the sewer commission. I'll be leaving at the end of my term. Uh, I just want to thank everybody who's uh, helped during the process. I want to make a couple of comments. When I joined the board many, many years ago, um, I, I think I replaced Paula and the uh, board uh, with Bob Ebersol. So I want to thank Bob Ebersol. Uh, I also have to thank uh, Jack Rodigans, who, believe it or not, we had a great time working with Jack uh, at the end of the day. Um, but I couldn't have done it without Mike. Uh, Mike and I helped rebuild this sewer department to where it is today. And I'm very proud of what we've done. I got to thank Jay Simeone and Butch Pilata uh, and Carl Luck. Um, and with Mike, that was a great board that we were on, Mike, if you remember. We did a lot of good things. And I also want to thank Bob, uh, Bob for the time she worked with us for all the years that we were in our hair. Uh, and I can't go without thanking uh, Rob Oliver. Uh, I really appreciated Bob's expertise, his way that he did things, uh, and, and Rob was missed. I also want to thank everybody I've been working with now, Brett, um, Mike Mackin, uh, again, Mike, uh, Paula, and uh, uh, of course, you, Mr. Chair, and uh, Bill are not from the DPW. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, guys. Dave, thank you for your service. Um, we'll miss you. But I also think the select board has the authority to appoint anyone they want, whether they want to be on or not. So <laughs> oh, I, I, I am looking for a replacement. I talked to a couple of people. Uh, but this is a good opportunity for someone in uh, the rank and file with the citizens. If they want to join a board, this is a very good board to work with. You don't have to know sewer. Uh, what you got to know is how to run a business or even have business sense. Uh, but your, your input would be very important. Uh, I think now is a crucial time for the sewer department. Like I said, Mike, uh, I don't think we could have done it without Mike Null. Uh, but today, it's new challenges, new ways to go. Uh, anybody can do this with the assistance, but I do urge someone to come and join the uh, the board. I will still be looking, 
But I also got to make it clear that you know we're at a point where we do need more customers. Our system is too big for what it is. Uh, so if you're on the sewer line, please call uh, the sewer division at the DPW, talk to Paula. Uh, if you have any questions about sewer and want to join, call Paula. Don't call the chairman of the uh, select board. I'd highly recommend you call the people who know what's going on. Uh, and, and we will try to help you one way or the other. But for what is going on out there, uh, I know with taxes being high and uh, the way un unrest is going, uh, and I apologize for some of that. Uh, I, I wish we'd go back to the town where we were back when uh, Butch, Jay, Mike, and Carl and I were on the board. That, those were good times. And I'm not saying they're not good without you guys here today. It's just different. And uh, you really got to uh, look at the business, but we're here to do one thing, and that's serve the public. And I think we've done a great job at that. And I don't hold my head down and blow it anyway once a while. And we try to control our budgets with uh, the people. We, we try not to raise rates on the whim of, hey, we got to raise rates. Uh, it was disheartening that we didn't get any aqua money. Uh, we now need it. And that's what it was designed for. But our chairman decided not to give us one one even vote. Uh, you so you don't mean the chairman of the sewer commission? No, the chairman of the um, uh, board of uh, selectmen. But if our rates are going up, I, I kind of blame them because that's exactly what he told us to do, that we should raise our rates. So, again, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for what you did. And, and John, you, you're doing a great job as the chair. I, I can't ask for a better chair. Okay, thank you, Dad. Um, any other announcements? No, but I just want to say a public comment, if I can. Um, Dave, you've been incredible to work with and I'm really sorry to hear that you're not going to run again for another term. Um, you've been an integral part of this team and you will definitely be missed. Well, you guys are doing a good job and I appreciate that, Paul. Okay. Any other announcements? No, nope, I'm going to miss you, Dave. That's all. I just look <laughs> out your window. I'm right across the street. So I'm waving to you now. So are you? Hold on. There you go. Oh, yeah. You're going to be missed on this commission, man. Thanks for being here. You know what, Brett, I got to say, I hope you, uh, uh, nothing but the best, but you, you, out of all the people that I know on the years I've been doing this, has come a long way. I mean, you're, you're very good. And I hope you realize how good you are. So, Well, I got a ways to go, but thanks for the mentoring. Yeah, not, not really. You're a good boy. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. That got sounds, you like, sounds like a vote for the next chairman. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. we'll have to talk. go ahead brett i said we'll have to talk about that okay um let's see we had a 615 appointment um for wright pierce and that was really a placeholder in case we needed to invite them um but bill and paula and myself did a teleconference with them and i'll, I'll just go over real quickly what we talked about because it'll, it'll be touched upon a little more detail in current business. Um, so we we brought up whether they thought we would be able to get any state revolving loan funds. And, and basically <clears throat> those are for projects that are $500,000 and over. And um, you know we, we thought about some of the repairs we're having, we might be able to use that money, but it's a year to two years to get your hands on that money if you qualify. So that's not really an option for any of the things we're talking about right now. And then uh, we brought up the Mass One repair and the Dana Street repairs that are going to have to happen. And they absolutely agree they need to be done and they would consider it a priority to get them done. Um, and then we, we talked about grant funding the the green program whatever it was called um getting some money via that to replace our um palms but it's been very difficult for both mp and for paul and bill to get information on newer versions or replacements for those pumps and so wright pierce is going to look at that and try to help with that and um also, uh, you know, we're going to be doing some manhole repairs, and we have identified from a previous report that they did the, the 30, 30 top uh, I&I manholes 
the, the 30 that are in need, greatest need of repair. And they're going to put together a quote about, because <clears throat> that was done quite some time ago, they're going to put together a quote about coming and revisiting those 30 manholes, because we need to come up with um, an IFB, and it would be pretty challenging to do that if we don't know exactly what has to be done to each one of those manholes. So they're, they're going to, and it, <clears throat> I don't think it, It'll end up costing that much. They thought they could probably do it in two days, but I, I think it's necessary to, um, in order to come up with the uh, IFB. Um, okay, now <clears throat> uh, current business. Um, I, I'd like to, unless anyone objects, do the minutes and then jump down to the budget because uh, there's a, a slight chance I might have to leave. So I, I wanted to get that done first. So the uh, minutes, did everyone have a chance to read them? Yes. <clears throat> okay. I, I I read them and I only have one question and I would actually have to watch the video. <clears throat> and it's, it's where I remember I dropped out <clears throat> and Brett, you continued the discussion and mm -hmm. voted on uh, the $250,000 for uh, uh, capital from retained earnings. And the roll call vote was, everyone said I, and I think you had already moved on when I jumped back in and I said, if I had been there, I would have said I, but I don't think that counts as an official vote. So I just wanna watch that part of the meeting that, um, To, to see exactly where I came back in, that's all. So if we could hold off until the next meeting for sure. those that wouldn't mind. Absolutely. Okay. Well. All right, then, like I said, if no one objects, I'd like to move down to the, to the budget. Uh, I mean, the budget's on here, I guess, because the budget is never done. <laughs> um, and I think we all agreed on what, um, we should do for a rate increase. And I don't really want, I'm not looking to change that, but I, I did want to talk about the amount we are transferring to uh, from retained earnings only because I think we have some better numbers than we had at the last meeting. And, you know, we came up with that number to hopefully have a buffer. And I'm not so sure that that buffer is going to be there. So, Paul, if you if you want to talk a little bit about the numbers as they are right now, and, and including what we know about the repairs at Dana Street, Mass Ave, the additional pumping, um, and I don't think we have a, any numbers yet for the carb troll uh, at the three large stations. So, go ahead, Paul. Paul, you're muted. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I do um, have some numbers about the on the carb control, which I've plugged in. And to date, with with those expenses, we'll be spending one hundred and six thousand dollars approximately on pump stations and capital needs. Um, our initial budget was eighty thousand seven hundred and sixty eight, and then we encumbered fiscal twenty three funds and came up with the revised budget of ninety five thousand four hundred and eight. Um, we will need to transfer funds, funds from other line items in the budget, and, and we do have that. Um, our estimated capital costs in fiscal 25 are 335,000, which has gone up since we have a, since we voted the budget. And that's because the Dana Street stations are coming in at about $70,000 for the actual repairs. And then we're looking at about, I would say 15 to 20, um, potentially in pumping because it's, a, it's much more flow than mass one. Um, so we don't really have, we talked about having a buffer of a couple hundred thousand dollars, but with expenses at 335 um, and we budgeted 350, we don't really have much of a buffer. Um, so we wanted to have something for emergencies and in the event that uh, we ran into an issue with I&I &I and, and without taking more from retained earnings, there isn't really that buffer. Okay. 
the the dentistry repairs, Paula. You, you said seventy, but isn't that going to be? Oh, it's going. I'm sorry. It's going to be over a hundred. It's going to be over. Yeah, I'm right, sorry. It's we, be have, we have to do the repair that we just did on Mass One, which is much plus, more. Plus the uh, the the other work. So. Um, right. And the right, we have to do another seventy thousand on Mass One, about a hundred thousand on Dana, um, or more, um, plus pumping, which is going to be about twenty one. Um, so we've got a lot of expenses of, uh, ahead of us. So, and, and we voted on um, moving two hundred and fifty thousand over at the last meeting, correct? Correct. So, um, I guess do do we need to bump that up even a little more? And again, it's because you know we just can't go to our savings account and pull in some extra money to cover something if it's not budgeted. So I'm going to toss that out to the group. Mr. Chair, I got a question. Did we pull any money out for capital expenditure or did we not fill that back up as well? Well, there was 35,000, if I understand your question, there, we were gonna be putting $35,000 into, uh, was it retained earnings? Transfer to capital, we were gonna transfer 35,000 to capital. And I think we voted to leave that not take that, leave that in place. Am I right on that, Paula? No, we voted to move 35,000. The, the commission voted to move $35,000 from retained earnings into capital. Into capital, yeah. Right, right. But so what, one what's, question. What's the, balance, what's the balance now in capital? So in capital, um, in sewer capital reserve stabilization, we have 145, we had 145,964. We took 35,000 this year and put it into our, our capital, um, into our budget. And then we're proposing to transfer, we're kind of doing an in and out. Last year, you took 35,000, but then put 36,621 back in, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. So in fiscal 25, I was proposing just to move money in and that would be the 35,000. Um, so let me just figure out what that would be. And from what I remember, I thought we were gonna bring it up to $100,000 on a capital expenditure side for uh, maintenance. And then the 250 would have been for pump stations, which is a total of 350,000. Is that what you're coming up with? Yeah, that's what we had talked about. But what I'm saying, and that's what we did. We we actually took, so Dave, to answer your first question, we would have 147,000 in capital at the end of this fiscal, at the at the um, yep. end of fiscal 25, if we move that 35,000. Yep. Um, in retained earnings right now, based on the money we've spent, we have 1.7 million. One one million seven hundred and seventy six thousand. I don't know what the interest has earned, so it's probably higher than that. Um, we had proposed to transfer thirty five thousand to capital and then three hundred and eighty one thousand two hundred and fifty one dollars into the operating budget, and that was to offset the costs and to increase our capital line item. Um, and then that would leave us with one point three six million. Um, at yep. the end of fiscal 25. But between the capital expenditure and what we're pulling for retained earnings, we'll add those together, what would we have if we had an emergency? I'm, I'm coming up with four. You mean in the budget, what would we have? Yeah, if you're, if you're going to pull, um, you got $100,000 in your capital expenditure line, right? Give or take. Then you want to pull another, we're going to pull 250000 out of the retained earnings we want to change that to how much so we were we were actually pulling 200 and we were actually pulling more than that for capital um our hey, capital what? our capital what? line I, sorry go ahead the last i heard it was 250 that's what we voted on last meeting 
Mm. Now, we had we had voted to move an additional 250 for a buffer. Right, right now, our capital line item, our capital expense line item in fiscal 25, as voted, is $350,000. Right. So, so you want, that's our. You want to take more money out? You want to go to 300000 yes. That would give us 400000 in capital. Right. Right. Okay. One option is not to move the thirty-five, and that would bring you to three three eighty-five. If you don't move the thirty-five into capital, um, if you want to move that money into capital, we'd have to up the amount we're we're taking from retained earnings. I leave that up to the other commissioners. I think we get if you if you do what we just said, we pretty, we're in pretty good shape. I would think, wouldn't you think? At the three hundred and. What are you about three hundred eighty-one thousand? Yeah, if we, if we don't move the capital, it would be three eighty-five. So, what would your opinion be on that? I, I would say keep it at the three eighty-one, but well, the... go out, go take him out. Um, so, the problem that I'm having is right now, based on everything we have in the capital plan, which is replacement of. Pumps and motors at Dana Street, line repairs, which I have in at $100,000, the carb control. Um, so we're spending $172,500 on Dana, spending $5,000 on Lemonster, $130,000 on Mass One, um, $27,000 on spare parts. So that brings us to $335,000. So you, the only buffer you have is. The, the difference between the 350 and the 335. Are we budgeting all those items for next year? Yes. Yeah. That's based on the capital plan. Uh, now we can certainly move some of those things, uh, but I will tell you that the, the pumps are proposed at uh, Dana Street and at Mass One. My hope is we can get some grant funding for those, um, but the, the direction from the directive from the commission last meeting was not to count on um grant funding and to budget it so but those pumps are clogging um and according to robert the dana street pump station really needs to be upgraded well it, it is what it is but you're correct we don't want to add in money we don't have i mean i'm, I'm sure we can get grant money too but i don't want to count on that i think mike yeah, exactly. did the yeah. same thing yeah. uh, right. if it comes in it goes back in at the end of the year anyways back to the same earnings right so, right to me, it doesn't matter. If you want to make it an even 400000 it doesn't matter because whatever is left over goes back in or whatever. But like, you just don't want to have a special town meeting to grab a couple hundred bucks or something. If, right, if exactly. Yeah. Right, and, exactly. and the, other, the other issue is, um, you know, as, as we work on these manholes, uh, I mean, we have an I&I &I problem. And if we discover something where there is a lot of inflow or infiltration that we need to repair as quickly as possible. Um, that's another concern about having enough money available. Yep, I agree. So are, are, are you thinking, how, how much are you saying you, you would, the total you would transfer from uh, retained earnings and what would you do with the, uh, Capital reserve. You take the 381 number that Paul threw out, I would round that out out of retained earnings to bring it up to 400,000. I wouldn't touch or transfer any of these, getting too complicated when you do that. My opinion. Okay. Um, Brett, Mike. Um, I, I agree with the 400 number. Um, I'm, I'm a little lost. Um, like we're throwing out numbers on Dana, we're throwing out numbers on the manholes. These are all, I'm assuming, projected costs. We've got nothing solid on any of this yet. Um, when I'm when I'm looking at some, your meter. when I'm looking at some of these proposals and seeing like sixty one thousand dollars to put the two vents in and do this and do that, it's. It's a little overwhelming to me. They, they're using Schedule 80, okay, which, you know, is plastic pipe. Um, you know, I get it. There's work involved. I do not understand the scope of work. It just seems, 
I don't know if there's a way to, to, to put out bids on this or something. It just seems to me a little out of control in my, in my opinion. That's all. It just seems all of a sudden we find this and we're going to throw 60,000 at it. We're going to throw, and I'm okay with that. If we're spending it wisely, if, if we've got estimates, um, including the manhole side of it, I was glancing at that and the, from, you know, from way back, a lot of those repairs, there's a lot of numbers that just repeat themselves. You know, there's, oh, there's a crack, $1,500. There's a route, you know. It, I would like to see a little more due diligence, I guess, or or a little more bidding, competitive bidding on it. Because it yeah. just seems all of a sudden there's a faucet open and it's disappearing quick. That's all. Right. Um, a couple of things. It's regarding the manholes. It's one of the reasons we'd like to have Wright Pierce come in and look at those 30 manholes to give us a better idea what we can use to put together for an IFB. Yeah. Um, and the, the repairs at Dana Street, that number is coming from what we already did at Mass One, which we know cost approximately 40,000 plus the pumping uh -huh. and the 64,000 for the other work at the two stations is a quote from Empey, but yes, um, Bill and Paul are going to go out and get estimates from other, other providers. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, I'd, I'd have to visit and physically see Okay, which I have no problem doing, but it just it's a lot of money real fast. And, and you know, and we're not talking, you know, we're talking like sixty thousand dollars for let's say two days worth of work. And I get that, I get it, and there's some big expenses there, but it just it can it can happen quick, in my opinion. It, it, and it's happening quick. So I completely agree. I almost fell off my chair when I saw the quote. Um, yeah. Bill and I both did um, but we do plan on getting a couple other quotes I will say we did you know talk when we talked to Wright Pierce they asked you know what the ballpark was and we told them and they were not shocked by that number at all mm -hmm. um, so you know the, the other side of it is if we don't do these repairs and one of them are to let go we'd be looking at a lot more money in clean up because we'd have to be pumping constantly and we'd have sewage overflow yeah I, I, i'm not saying i'm not advocating don't do it i'm advocating let's just make sure we've done our due diligence that's all yeah we want to get at least two money goals. wisely yeah you know how, how let me ask you a question how would you go out to bid if you have nothing to go out to bid with you, you're getting a scope of work from our uh our guys you're going to take that and send that out and compare apples and apples or? Well, so our, and John, I, I think this is our intent is to basically tell them what the situation is for, for the for the priority repair, right? Pierce recommended, we, we just put, we just get three quotes because it's a priority repair because if one of those pipes was to let go, we'd have a real problem. So their recommendation is to, is to consider the priority repair, get three quotes, um, and yes, Dave, I would use the, the scope of work that MP put together. Um, and if they wanted to do a site visit, they could certainly do that. And Wright Pierce gave us, I think, three names, Bill, I think. Yeah, I think they gave us more than three. So we definitely want to reach out to them, have them come out, look at the work that, as we propose, it needs to be done and get at least three quotes and go with the lowest bidder. Mm -hmm. I mean, do do we want to go to the extreme of uh, getting Wright Pierce more involved with well, when, this? When I when I do proposals or when I do this, it's hard. I would never take another contractor's scope and bid on that. I would I would want to have it from either Paula or the town uh, with that with their letterhead, or from an engineer. Uh, I'm just saying, you get into trouble when you take someone else's scope. And, and Bill, didn't you, or was it Wright Pierce that questioned the schedule 80? No, it was Bill. 
it was, it was bill yeah. and and right pierce we our plan was to go out to bid on this project and right pierce discouraged that because it's a priority repair and it needed to be done and we asked them if they needed to do specs and they said you really don't need us to do specs on this um, I did ask them if the Schedule 80 is sufficient. I sent an email today, um, but I haven't heard back yet. Um, but, but John, that was our original intent when we sat down with them. I, I didn't hear, hear the last few words, Paula. When we originally sat down with Wright Pierce, it was to have them help us get specifications for the suction lines, and they discouraged that and said they really didn't need to be involved. It's pretty cut and dry. Yeah. I mean, and, and Paula did read through, I believe you did, read through what MP had put together. And they, they thought that sounded pretty reasonable about what needed to be done. You know, they weren't necessarily commenting on the price other than they weren't surprised by it. But yeah, I, I think <clears throat> I would hope that anyone that we contact about this would want to come out <laughs> and take a look. Well, maybe what you should do is set up a time frame for this, uh, send it out by, and I'm just giving you dates, but say send it out by Friday. Uh, you have a right to visit it anytime the week of next week, and you expect proposals the following week, something like that. Um, so they're all they're all responding. Uh, hopefully, they'll come out and take a look at it. That, that's what I hope and that they would do. I mean, I, I think we're all on the same page in that. Uh, we certainly don't want to spend any money that we don't need to. Um, mm. But we need to have it available in case we have to spend it. Um, yeah. So we've all said a few times, um, if we don't use it, we can put it back. The, the only thing I'm worried about is that they start doing it and we miss something. Uh, and they're going to come back and say, well, it wasn't in your scope. Um, that's why you always count on an engineer to review it anyways. Maybe we could uh, write up that scope of work, put it on Lundberg letterhead, send it to our engineers and say, are we missing anything here before it goes out to bid? They would know. I, I'd feel better, comfortable with that, like a review of the letter, and then send it out. Yeah, when you say our engineers, are you talking about someone like Wright Pierce or engineers that we've used for peer review or what? I, I would leave that up to... Uh, the uh, Paul or Ed Bill, I, I would probably use right there so just to review it. If they're saying it's a priority repair, we want to make sure we got the right scope of work. Okay. That's how you get in trouble, you know, with change orders. You know? Right. Any other comments? No? Okay, so <clears throat> does someone want to make a motion to uh, increase the amount from retained earnings and uh, would we say leave 35,000? Right. To bring it up to 400,000. Uh, 400, yeah, that'd be another 50,000, wouldn't it? A little less than that. Like, that was it was like 20, wasn't it? Like 20, give or take? Yeah. yeah. What does that leave us, Paula? Paula, you're muted. I'll text her. I was doing the I was doing the math. It's oh, okay. an additional it's an additional eighteen thousand seven hundred and forty eight dollars and ninety nine cents. So if we raise it to four hundred. That's that's what would be additional. If you raise the amount, so we'd be adding eighteen thousand seven hundred and forty-eight dollars and ninety-nine cents to our three hundred and fifty. Would this be a warrant question too? It'll be the, it'll be our budget. It won't be a warrant. It'll be a budget. Well, it's a warrant article because our budget is always a warrant article. So, so, Brett, you're going to do your thing? All right, I make a motion that we raise the um, retained earnings 
from three uh, from what it is to four hundred thousand for our new budget. I'll uh, second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, let's take a vote. Um, Mike Nolt. Aye. Brett Ramson. Aye. Dave McDonald. Aye. And I for myself. The motion passes. Okay. Um, also under budget discussion was, um, did everyone have a chance to look at the presentation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any any input going once, going twice? Okay, no. <laughs> no, I, I would change one of the slides around. I'm gonna, I bet I know which one, but go ahead. No, go ahead, yeah, Tom. But, go for it. No, go, go ahead, John. Um, hold on a second here. The, the one that talks about um, the increase of $12.34 per month. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Brett, All did right, you have well, Go ahead. No, Brett said he had one. Brett, was that the one you were having? Yeah. That's it's a nice presentation, though. So let me let me ask this question. Are you thinking the only thing that should be on that page is the twelve dollars and thirty four cents? No, I think it should be explained up front. All right. Um, so you you just want to reverse reverse those two numbers? Yep. I, I think uh, when you start talking percentages, the town is sick of percentages right now because that's okay. all everybody's talking about. I, I don't have a problem with that. Although I, we can work on the wording exactly how to word it, but it's, no we problem. Can switch, we can switch that around. Yeah, no problem. Um. Oh, the other thing is, um. Well, I'll come back to that at the end. All right. So I think we're all set with the um, budget discussion. You know, one, one question, Paul, did you talk to Jack Rabbit on this presentation? Because he got a lot of his little things in it. No, I didn't. Like the little calculator, the line, I like that. No, that's just me being trying to be creative. Yeah. Jack's presentation looked like an NCIS uh, with the lines going everywhere. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jack always has really a lot of flow charts. He does a good job. Yeah, he does. The question, the question marks are nice to we did yeah. outsource. We outsource outsource this to Jack. Yep. No. Oh, it's very good. Okay. Um, repairs at Mass One Pump Station. Paula, you want to? Um, just a quick overview. You guys all know that the repair took place. It took place on two twenty seven. There was 15,000 gallons in the pipe in the force main, which was more than we had anticipated. Uh, they initially transported the, the sewage to Twin City and that station wasn't able to keep up. So then they moved it to Dana. Uh, they completed it at approximately 3.30 a.m. Um, it all went well. Um, and you guys saw the estimate for the suction lines, which we just talked about going and getting some more prices on. Okay, um, just want to toss <clears throat> this out for the Dana Street repairs. Bill and Paul and I were talking that you know, it was great that we could take Mass One and dump it into Dana Street, but when we shut down Dana Street, uh, we're not really sure where we're going to be putting that because um, there's no other there's no pump station large enough. There's only one pump station for Fitchburg and it's a small one. And I don't think they'll be able to hold the, uh, take the capacity, has the capacity. 
So do we have to take it directly to the treatment plant, which sets up a whole other set of issues? Um, or I don't, I don't know, Bill, you probably would know this, you know, where the Dana Street force main stops being a force main and becomes gravity, could it be put into that manhole? Uh, just, we don't have to discuss it tonight. I just wanted everyone else to be aware that the pumping isn't going to be quite as simple as it was for Mass 1. That's it. And I do think it makes sense to have someone look at Dana Street. We've only heard from CTE that it's in a similar state, but we don't have any photographs. We don't have any information about exactly what needs to be uh, done. Yeah. We just heard it's similar. So I think we've got to have a tank entry done and really get a, a, a real scope of work on what needs to be done then. Yes. Mr. Chair, don't we have a big uh, sewer connection over where Tri, is it Tritown? It's on the Lunenburg line. Tri City, is that what you, what you mean? It's not Tri City, it's uh, where the old Tri Town uh, movie theater used to be. So, what, what kind of a connection is this, Dave? I think it's a huge, uh, like we could dump into that sewer there because it's still on the Lunenburg line. It goes into Fitchburg. Do you, you remember right next to the, uh, the old bar that used to be there? Uh, over, by the, over by the town dump. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's a possibility. I mean, uh, this is why I just wanted to toss it out tonight so we can start thinking about all possibilities. If indeed we have to, well, we will work on Dana Street. Yep. Okay. Um, FY25 upcoming information for bids. You want to take that, Paula? Yeah, um, we're just. I've worked on on some of you know some of the the language in the IFB, but we really need, as Dave just pointed out, before you go out to bid, you need the specifications. Right. Um, and so we're we're waiting for the specifications from Wright Pierce, and and we're waiting for a date. Um, for them to be able to come out and take a look at those 30 manholes. Um, and the 30 manholes we keep talking about, those are the ones with the identified INI from their 2016 report. Um, my hope is to get the IFB done for release by the end of May, early June, so they can start work right in fiscal the beginning of fiscal 25. Um, but it's all going to depend on when we get the, the information from Wright Pierce. And this is the ARPA funding that you guys had received. This is the hundred thousand dollars. Right. Any questions there? Uh, no. Okay. The state revolving loan fund. I, I touched upon that. One of the things we talked to Wright Pierce about is, you know, if we look at our capital plan over time, maybe we can roll that into a project or consider it a project and maybe get some funding for that, doing it that way. They thought perhaps um, that might work. So it's just something to keep in mind as we move forward. Um, business manager's report. Um, the spill sends unit came in. That was the unit that we purchased a long time ago, which is basically the float that sits in the manhole um, that's going to be hopefully useful in identifying I, &I issues. Um, Robert Lilly from CTE is looking at all of his data to identify the best place to install it. I want to install it so that we don't end up with a police detail to, to save some costs. Um, but the installation and training of the unit is planned for Tuesday the 19th, um, but we're waiting for a time. I guess the crew that the manufacturing and the company is sending people out from England, I guess they're doing some in, uh, installs in Starling and Worcester. Um, so they'll be doing us at the same time. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how it works. Uh, the majority of the generator work is complete, um, except for a controller on the Lemonster Road generator, and we're waiting for a quote on that. Um, I sent out Robert's logs, which hopefully you got a chance to review. Um, he put a panel in at West Street. He is finding a lot of bricks in the wet wells, um, which is a possible indicator of I and I. Um, we've had a lot of clogs. We've had a couple clogs at Lemonster Road. 
Mass 3 and Francis Street that caused alarms. I did ask Bill to put up a, I had done a little, basically a little blurb about um, logs with some, with some artwork and asked him to put that up on, on Facebook. And it basically articulates what's okay to put in the sewer and what's not. Um, because these alarms cost us money. So if we could get people to stop putting things they shouldn't down the sewer, I think that would go a long way. Um, I've been in touch with Kelly Brown, who's the regional coordinator for the Green Communities Division uh, Central Region regarding the 2024 Green Communities Grant. Um, the application isn't available yet, but money is available for pumps. Um, so I'm working with Matt Corbin from Wright Pierce to get all the data together to hopefully get the information together for an application for this grant round. Um, any questions, comments? From anyone? No? Okay, I, I just want to go back to the concerns that Mike Nault first expressed, but I, I think we all have them. It's 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 a lot of money, and we certainly don't want to spend anything we don't have to. Um, my concern is that, you know, if it ends up being the worst case scenario, we just need to have the money available to us. But I, I don't I don't think uh, the sewer department or the commissioners are going to be out spending money that isn't necessary. Well, I think we're on the right track with the you know multiple bid idea to at least get a real sense of you know the overall from company to company the differences what we're dealing with and what we're looking at. Yeah. And I mean, if anything doesn't make sense, Wright Pierce is always pretty good about answering questions for us. So. Okay. You know, Mr. Chair, I, want thank, I want to thank Mike for bringing that up, though. It's a good point. And uh, Mike, that's what makes you you. Good point. I'll just have to learn to articulate my concerns quicker. There you go. <laughs> Okay. Um, any other thoughts or comments? Um, no, but there's no public here. So, uh, any public comment from the sewer commissioners? Mr. Chair, could we get a copy of that scope of work too when it's ready to go off a bit? You, you talking about the pump station? Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to be careful when we say bid because bid. we're really not talking about a bid. Um, a bid takes many months to get out. Um, I think what we're talking about is getting quotes. And what I'll do is I'll put together a scope of work and send it to Matt and Kevin Olson at Wright Pierce for them to review. Bill and I will put it together and send it to them um, and see if they have any tweaks and then send that to several companies. Yeah, we, I mean, I'm just saying, can we get a copy of that? Um, Absolutely, yeah. of course. Anything else? Okay, we've got some meetings scheduled. Um, the one on March 6th, although I think is a public meeting regarding the uh, change in connection fees. Yeah, 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 you're correct. Okay. But are we going to have a regular meeting as well? Um, I mean, how, how have these public meetings gone in the past, not including Pratt Street? I don't know. I wasn't involved in any of them, so you yeah. guys would know better. Probably we should keep the agenda as light as possible, um, like no, no appointments. Um, just in case there is a lot of participation. I don't anticipate it. Okay. What do you think, Dave? You've been around longer. It's yeah, like I mean, you got to concentrate on your... Uh, what, what, do we know when you're going to the Finance Committee? 
Yeah. The 20th. 20th. What, what, what day is that? Do you know? Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Just be yourself, dude. That's all you got to do. Yep. Yep. Be honest and don't hold anything back. Okay. Um, thank you. The going back to the March 26th, um, you know, you've been, been on commissioner a lot longer than I have. This public meeting regarding the connections, do you anticipate that would be a long meeting? Do you anticipate no. to be a little? Go ahead. No, not at all. Okay. Um, so let's let's make it a regular meeting, Paula, but not not have any appointments. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, if someone wants to make a motion. To share one last thing, if you could, I just want to, uh, again, thank Jane. Uh, Jane, you've been a breath of fresh air uh, working with you and uh, what you do for the town. And uh, you're, you're never going to be forgotten as far as I'm concerned. You've done a great job. And I really appreciate everything you've done, Jane. And my heart goes out to you. And if you ever need anything in the future, please reach out. Thank you. Jay, make, make sure you put that in the minutes. <laughs> hey, you, don't, you don't have to. You can capitalize. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do I hear any motions? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Brett. Anyone want to second that? Oh, I'll second that. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Uh, Mike Nault. Aye. Brett. Aye. Dave. Aye. And I, for myself, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Meet Lunenberg. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everybody.